IllinoisPolicy.org, by the way, should be one of your bookmarks. Make sure you have that near the top so you can check out with them every day because they cover so many things and cover them so well and run a great critique. But they also, they never critique anything without offering up ideas on how to improve it. That's one of the things I appreciate about how they do business. Adam Schuster's on the line with us. He's Director of Budget and Tax Research. Adam, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for taking time to be on the show. We appreciate it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about budget. We, we, we pass something, or is it a spending plan? Or is that what a budget is supposed to be? Sure. So I think that there's a few things you need to have if you're going to pass a budget. You need to know how much money you have. Okay. And you need to uh, plan your spending by prioritizing within that limit. Kind of like you do at home over the kitchen table. Exactly. Okay. And lawmakers didn't do either of those things. They did <laughs> okay. not pass an official revenue estimate, uh, which makes it impossible for us to critique their, their revenue assumptions fully, although I did it anyway. And uh, <laughs> the, the other thing they, they did is they, they knowingly spent uh, more than they're expected to take in, and they, they sort of hid that fact by using a lot of tried-and-true gimmicks um, in Illinois politics. But... You know, every year before Governor Rauner was elected, they claimed to have passed a balanced budget, right? Right. And yet, when you look at the end-of-year cash balances, which is the true uh, you know, definition of balance, we've had an unbalanced budget every year since 2001. And the way they hide that is with the type of gimmicks I, I outlined on IllinoisPolicy.org in that article. And uh, by the way, you'll, you'll want to read this because uh, this, um, this will get your attention. The article, Illinois General Assembly passed a state budget out of balance by as much as $1.5 billion. You know, I know you're thinking around the kitchen table, we've all done that. Sure. <laughs> um, but, you know, for us, it's, you know, $150. And, you know, we'll figure out a way to make that work. Uh, $1.5 billion piled on top of the God knows how many billions we owe as it stands right now just makes it even deeper. Yeah, that's right. And and when you're it, when you're making your budget at home, like I said, the the process starts with deciding how much money you have. That's not the gen the way the General Assembly has been doing budgets. They haven't passed a revenue estimate, which is a projection for how much money they're going to take in since 2014. So what they've been doing instead is passing spending plans. They create a wish list of items they'd like to have. And so for someone at home, you might like to have a new Ferrari. You might like to eat out at your favorite restaurant every night of the week, but you can't afford to do it. And if if the average Illinois tax taxpayer lived the way the General Assembly has been living, which is they, they create a wish list of spending and anything they can't afford just goes on a high interest credit card, you wouldn't last very long. And our state's not going to last very long if they keep it up. So what we're asking them to do instead is implement some sound budgeting principles. And I, I took a lot of, uh, I took a look at other states and what they do well with their budgets. And there's, there's several different things we could do differently. But the number one thing we've been pushing is a constitutional amendment to cap spending in Illinois by tying the growth in annual spending to a 10-year average of growth in the economy. So essentially what that means is lawmakers cannot spend more than taxpayers can afford to pay. Which, you know, it, it, that, I don't, you want to scream duh at that, but it, y you can't because it, it's a point that seemingly has not been made with them, or if it has, they've completely and willingly ignored it. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. They're they're flouting the balanced budget requirement of the Constitution by using a lot of gimmicks. So a few of the gimmicks they used this year, they're selling the Thompson Center for the third year in a row, um, <laughs> and they're they're counting on three hundred million dollars from it this year, just like they did the previous two years. They're counting on a bunch of sort of speculative pension savings that are are very unlikely to materialize for about four hundred and forty four million dollars, uh, and they're sweeping a bunch of money from other state funds uh, to the tune of eight hundred million dollars. Which is essentially just taking money out of your right pocket to put it in your left. It's not really revenue for the state. It's just dipping into other account to take money uh, that was meant for dedicated purposes and throwing it into the black hole that is the general funds budget. Um, so that's not a sound practice either. Uh, and the, finally, the one they're really ignoring, and they, they know they're ignoring it, is a court has ordered the state to pay a uh, some, some step increase back pay to ask me union workers, which is with state workers, and that's going to cost about $412 million. And the state knows they have to pay the bill, but they just didn't bother to include it in the budget at all. So when you start add, adding up these hundreds of millions and hundreds of millions, you get to that $1.5 billion out of balance pretty quickly. Yeah, you know, a million here, a million there. Sooner or later, we're talking real money, as the old saying goes. Uh, yeah. Adam Schuster is Director of Budget and Tax Research with Illinois Policy. IllinoisPolicy.org is the, is the site you want to visit. And you, you mentioned other states that are doing things right. Uh, for example. 
Well, for example, uh, 25 states currently have some type of spending cap. Some of those are better than others. Um, the best ones have two key features. They're in the Constitution, not just statutory law, and they require three-fifths of lawmakers to override the cap because you do need to have some way to override it in case there's a natural disaster or something like that. And they, they, you know, the same way somebody at home might have an unexpected medical expense or a car accident, you know, things happen. So we need to have an ability to pay for those when they come up, but it should take a, a broad consensus to do that. Uh, other things, we use essentially phony math, phony accounting. Um, those, those fund sweeps is one example I'm talking about. And so we've, we've introduced another constitutional amendment that would stop them from counting that as revenue. And revenue would only mean tax dollars. And if, if you get one-time revenue sources, then that's great. We can, you know, you can spend a little more. You can use it to pay down some of our debt. But you shouldn't be planning your budget based on these, you know, unreliable one-time revenue infusions. Um, th- that's just a few of the examples. I, I could go on and on about this. Uh, you know, other states also uh, that have constitutional balance budget requirements require end of year balance. So when the numbers all add up at the end of the year, it needs to equal you know zero or more. They either have to have a surplus or it has to be in balance. They can't go into the negative. Illinois only has a prospective balance budget requirement, meaning that it has to look balanced when they passed it, and after that, they don't really care. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. And he's right. He could go on and on. Literally, I, I would imagine you could go three or four hours and highlight different examples <laughs> and, and run this down on, on what they're doing wrong down in Springfield, and, and deliberately so in so many cases. Uh, yeah, but what it boils down to is just not following sort of common sense. I mean, there's, there's certain principles that people know when they make their own budget or if they're a small business owner that they know uh, they have to do. You need to, you need to count your spending. Uh, when you incur a bill, you know you have to pay it, so that counts as spending. You need to figure out how much money you have. I mean, these are, these are not wild or radical ideas. These are just sort of common sense um, practices that the, the legislature has been flouting, and they've been doing it mostly for political reasons. I'm stunned. I'm <laughs> shocked, I tell you, here in Illinois that that sort of thing would happen. See, this is why you need the folks at Illinois Policy, IllinoisPolicy.org. They dig into these things. They look at these things. They present you with numbers, actual facts and figures. And so many times, as I mentioned, offer a solution, which is, you know, if you're going to criticize, that's fine. But offer something up in return, and they do every single time. And you want to read Adam's piece. Illinois General Assembly passed the state budget out of balance by as much as $1.5 billion. He did a great job with his piece uh, and, and all the ones that he writes. Adam, we're out of time. I appreciate you taking time out of your day for us. Thank you for having me on.